Hi, I'm Roy and here I am with my little collection of 36 books that I bought from a vendor selling them as shabby chic decor items. So they're the kind of books that aren't really there to be read anymore. They just they just look like battered old books, which they are, but I'm going to read them anyway. And one category of book that features in this set um, are probably the most despised, the least wanted type of book ever, and that is Reader's Digest Condensed Books. Um, so these are, if you, if you search for them online, you'll see there's people trying to give them away, sometimes with an air of desperation. I've seen a you know, 90 Reader's Digest books need to go by tonight. Um, appeals for stock for charity book sales that explicitly veto Reader's Digest books as part of the uh, of, as what they want. Um, and actually saying, if you bring them, you're going to have to take them away. So they're that unwanted. If you, if you see them in shops at all, they're usually in boxes on the floor or perhaps outside the shop with absurdly low prices. And really the only constructive use I've seen them put to is uh, turning the older ones with kind of funky retro covers into, into notebooks by ripping the pages out and putting blank pages in, so a sort of book taxidermy. Uh, which is which is no fate for a book really, but that's the kind of view people have of them. They're completely unwanted. They're the pariahs of the book world. Why is this? Well, I'm going to have to find out because, as I said, I'm reading these books. Um, so just a bit of what what are, what even are they? Well, Reader's Digest, uh, Reader's Digest is a magazine. Uh, used to be a massively selling magazine and they did lots of mail order stuff on the side and the, the condensed books were part of that. So it was a subscription service. You could not buy these books in shops. You would um, basically, you'd be a subscriber. The books would just turn up. You weren't choosing what they were. So it was kind of in a kind of post-war sort of super efficiency you know the same sort of world i suppose that brought um convenience foods that kind of thing it's a it's a streamlined way of reading you don't have to choose what to read that readers digest editors are doing that for you you don't have to go shopping and choose books which obviously that would be a terrible chore um they, they just arrive and you don't even have to read the whole book. You're getting four books, maybe even five description chopped out, dialogue ch cut out so that you're just getting um, four books in the time it takes to read just one. Um, and I suppose yeah, apparently they were hugely successful. It seems odd to me. I would kind of think if you'd like a book, you'd want to read it all. And if you don't really like it, would you want to read any of it? But they had their readership, which is probably why there's so many of them around. Um, going since 1950, I think they just about made it into this century. I remember them when I was a kid. As a small child, a relative had a whole shelf full of them, which I was fascinated by because it just seemed odd that you had uh, loads of identical looking books. Um, and I knew, I knew the word condensed from things like carnation condensed milk and Campbell's condensed soup. So these sweet, intense substances, I thought the books were, would be like that, that somehow these were books that had the same sort of qualities as condensed milk, for instance. Um, and I was disappointed to find out they were just like normal books, but made shorter for people who didn't really like to read, is what I was, what I was told, uh, which might be a terrible prejudice. Um, and, you know, now, finally, 
I've actually read one. The one I've read, just going to put the tins down, which will make a bit of a racket. There you go, tin drop. Um, the one I read is from 1994, and it has four things in it. A Tom Clancy military thriller called Without Remorse. A woman's fiction, I guess you'd call it romance. Um, the Acorn Winter by Elizabeth Webster. A factual account of uh, surviving the sinking of a ship in, in World War II called The Survivor by Hans Herlin and a horse racing related thriller called Royal Stakes by John Welcome. So um, quite a variety, although they do have something in common, which is which is, which is interesting. Um, I do did wonder at one point if the editors are sort of masterminds of putting these putting these books together. Uh, I, I suppose they were really, um, but uh, yeah, for some reason, three of them have got boats in, so it's sort of like, um, okay, are, are there any books without boats? Um, the Tom Clancy one, uh, obviously that's been cut down a lot because his books are big and chunky. Um, it's set in the Vietnam era, it's a kind of origin story for one of his, char one of his repeated characters. Um, actually quite nasty because it's a, a vigilante type story. Um, so this guy, John Kelly, with his, with his yacht, his manly yacht of freedom, um, he, his girlfriend's killed and he uses his military skills in a sort of executioner stroke punisher style to, um, hunt down the bad guys and, and basically starts killing criminals all over the place. Um, in, in fact, the, the illustrations, uh, should mention that these have pictures you get sort of four or five pictures dropped into each text um which is good that reader's digest were throwing work to a load of illustrators um but they're not going to want um too much mayhem and bloodshed so the, the pictures for the without remorse are things like men men talking in restaurant uh, yeah, so lots cut out. So the, the experience of reading it is a bit like a dream where you know, you know, you know there was more to it, but you can't remember it. Acorn Winter um, also has a yacht in it. Um, the lead character Beth, um, her husband dies, the child dies. She makes friends with a woman who who then dies, um, but she does not become a remorseless killing machine. Uh, she becomes a special needs teacher in a village in England, um, and there's some quite quite sweet romance stuff. Um, the survivor, again, we're still at sea. Probably the most compelling of them because those sort of you know how how can people possibly survive this situation? It's it's quite a, um, a naturally engaging sort of narrative, and um, the. The, the land-based entry into the into the collection royal stakes uh, set at the beginning of the 20th century stuff about the prince of wales edward the the abdicating one um, and horse racing setting lots of lots of stuff to do with arist arist aristocrats and how life was in those days wasn't so engaged with this um, actually was reading this in a premiere in in Thursk, um, which um, I think if they had had a Gideon Bible, I might have made a grab for that to start to start varying what I was reading. Um, but they didn't. Finished it. It's fine. If if I wanted to read a horse racing thriller, though, I would probably get a Dick Francis um, rather than another one of these. Um, so I think for me, not really decided yet as to the qualities of Reader's Digest condensed books. 
it's not the same experience as being fully immersed in the world. You don't really feel you're making the commitment to that author and that book because you know you're not getting the whole thing um, and because of the way they've come to you as this kind of pre-edited selection. Uh, so, um, yeah, odd one, really. Um, but um, I will persist. There's, there's a couple more. Obviously, I'll give myself a rest before reading another Reader's Digest book. Um, maybe go for one of the practical options next. That's all I'm going to say for now. Goodbye.